Hello and welcome to the channel. In today's episode we're going to talk about how to use Azure Logic Apps standard while decoding a flat file. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So naturally flat file support is nothing new for Azure Logic Apps when we think about the consumption skew and the support that's been there for years as a result of the use of the integration account. Now one of the challenges for some organization was that there were some additional costs incurred by using the integration account and for some people they ran felt that that was a rather prohibitive now one option that you do now have is the standard SKU, and within the standard SKU, you can go ahead and use maps and schemas and you do not require the integration account and so for some organizations that might be a little bit more attractive now question is, okay, if you don't need an uh, integration account, where do these artifacts get stored? And so when you're building your solutions in VS Code, what you're going to see is that there's going to be a folder where you'd be able to go ahead and place these artifacts. So there's a folder for schemas and a folder for maps itself. Now, do note that there are some current limitations with this approach. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a place to include .NET components. And as a result, mileage may vary depending upon the types of maps that you're creating, especially if you're going to go ahead and migrate some of those maps from BizTalk over to Azure Logic App Standard. And there's extensive use of functoids and .NET components from that perspective. So in this video, we're not going to go ahead and create any schemas by hand or using any sort of tooling to do so. Instead, we're going to leverage the work of a good friend, Sandro. Uh, Sandro had previously published a BizTalk server learning path and as part of uh, that content what he has is uh, some schemas that we can leverage both from a positional flat file which we're going to use in this demo but he also has a CSV example as well. So here's the link to the training kit. Uh, I'll include the link in the description as well. But thanks Sandro for making your donation to the community and we're going to go ahead and take advantage of it here. Now, when you go ahead and download the zip file, you'll unzip it and there's a whole series of different artifacts and, and content that you can work through. We're gonna be focused on working with schemas and within the dealing with positional flat files, that's the one that more specifically I'm interested in, but we've also got delimited by symbols as well. Uh, that's this schema over here. So whatever you wanna do, there's examples from that perspective. Now, when you're in VS Code and you go ahead and create a new project that's you know for Logic App Standard, there's gonna be essentially a taxonomy that's created for you. So we're gonna have an artifacts folder and then we've got two subfolders that are interesting to us, maps and schemas. And so what we'll go ahead and do is copy the schemas from Sandro's folder into the artifact schemas folder and then what they'll do is they'll show up within our project itself and once we get into our IDE uh, I'll show you why that's important because we're going to need to select it from a drop down now if you're using Azure portal uh, there is an upload experience as well uh, you can go ahead and just navigate to the artifacts section and then you can go ahead and manually upload schemas and maps as well now one thing to note uh, Sandro also includes sample files we're going to take advantage of these sample files and this applies to whether you're using the positional sample or the delimited sample itself. Now I suspect this is probably just more in terms of how the content is stored up in GitHub. Uh, when that happens what we do is we lose the Windows carriage return line feed and so when you try to use these samples you know out of the box per se or just you know without making any changes to them you're going to see some failures inside of the processing and logic apps. So the solution is quite simple. Go ahead, download Notepad++. Just go ahead and uh, do a search for that. And then open up each of the sample files that you want to use. And then go ahead and click on Edit. And then EOL Conversion. And then make sure that Windows is selected. When I opened these files up, Unix was selected. And I needed to convert them to Windows. Then to make sure that uh, you've done it correctly, you can go ahead and click on this character here kind of looks like a pie character. What that's going to do is show you symbols inside of your content itself. And here we can see that we've got CRLF as opposed to LF, which is all you'll see when you have a Unix based file itself. Once you do that, that uh, you'll be on the right path. But this will save you a few minutes of 
frustration if you go ahead and do this proactively. So let's talk just a little bit about a demo. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to upload these flat files to Blob Storage. Then inside of our Logic App standard Logic App, we're going to go ahead and consume files from Blob Storage. We're then going to go ahead and decode it. So that's you know the core content in this session itself. We're going to take the flat file. We're then going to go ahead and convert it essentially into an XML file, and then we're going to have a structured document. Now. I want to use JSON. I'll, I'll show you sort of another trick that we can do. And I want to convert the XML document to JSON so that I can go ahead and use the Dataverse connector easily and go ahead and upload these individual details from the file into a custom table inside a Dataverse. And so the, the Dataverse table is quite simple. I've just outlined what are the custom fields that I've created and we can go ahead and do so. Now I could have gone ahead and used XPath statements, but let's be honest, who likes to use XPath statements um, if we can use JSON? Uh, so we'll show you that as well. So let's go ahead, we'll flip over into our IDE and uh, show this to you in more details. All right, so here's essentially how I set up my Logic App. Now I am using the Azure connectors, in this case for the blob content. And so what I've gone ahead is created a, essentially a storage account inside of Azure. I've got a container called file in and here I'm just saying how often I want to go ahead and pull for those items. What gets returned here is metadata and then what I can go ahead and do is use the get blob content action and I can use dynamic contents called list of files path that will then go ahead and retrieve the data that I'm interested in. And I'll just go ahead and use the same connection settings, same connection that I had, had used earlier. Now, the next step, this is kind of the core of what we're talking about today, is um, we're going to use the flat file decoding action. Now, I can go ahead and add this. It will be considered a built-in. So we can click on built-in and go ahead and say decoding and drop it then onto our surface. We naturally need to go ahead and provide some content. So this is going to be from our blob content and then we need to go ahead and provide our schema name. So what you can do here is um, as I showed you in the slides you need to ensure that you've got your schemas populated into your project and once you've gone ahead and done so you will find them available in this drop down. So that's exactly what I've done here. Now in my specific example I'm going to go ahead and use the flat file version so that's the name of the schema that we have here. Now what's going to happen is this is going to emit a XML document as I discussed before. Now I would prefer to use JSON and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, use an expression. So I can use this JSON expression and then pass in the message body, essentially the XML message body from this output, the flat file decoding output and this will convert that into a JSON file itself. And so I've got multiple records, so that'll be modeled in JSON, no problem. So at this point, what you'd want to do is you'd want to go ahead and run this. And maybe you have a compose here previously, but run this and go ahead and capture the output of this conversion function itself. And the reason for that is you can then go ahead and use the sample payload to generate this schema that we have, right? And so here we've got essentially an array of employees and that's going to come in handy when we go ahead and connect to Dataverse. So that's kind of like an intermediary step that you'd want to go ahead and perform. So then what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and add a for each and here's where we're going to want to loop on something and what we're going to do is we're going to loop on the output from our parse JSON. It's going to detect that this is an array of employee and so we're going to be able to go ahead and loop on it. And so this is one of the reasons why I feel there's some benefit in doing this with JSON because it, now we've got a structured document or a typed document versus when we have the XML, it's essentially just a blob of, of text, right? And so, yes, we can use XPath, but in terms of iterating over top of it, this is going to be much simpler. Now, what we're going to do within this specific loop is we're going to add a new row. So what we're going to do is use the Dataverse connector, and this is going to be in the Azure section. And we can just search for Dataverse 
and then we're going to look for add a new row action. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pro uh, provide our environment. In this case, I've got an environment called DevOps-Dev. I've got the custom table that I've created. And then here, what I'm going to do is populate all of the values. Now, this is going to once again show up as dynamic content because we have that structured version. So for example, surname and street were some of the custom fields that were created and in the database. And so as a result, um, I've mapped that to the structure of the file that'll get generated from the parse JSON call. And so we can easily go ahead and perform that mapping. So that's a, a walkthrough of how you'd go ahead and structure this. Now let's go ahead and let's run it. Okay, so I went ahead, found my blob storage, went ahead, found my container. And now what I want to go ahead and do is upload a new file. And so this is that positional flat file that uh, I had previously talked about. If we go ahead and open it up, we'll just see a series of records here that are um, formatted using a positional formatted approach. So let's go ahead, let's just update this file. Okay, our file has been uploaded successfully. Now what we'll do is we'll flip over to our Logic app. Here we've got essentially our, our overview and uh, we've got our run history. Now, naturally before I had shown you um, how to build this in Visual Studio Code, um, I've deployed it naturally to the portal and we're using this interface to go ahead and run it. Okay, we, see, we can see that it's uh, successfully run. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the run history instance. Okay, so here we've got uh, a new blob being added. We can go ahead and get that content out of it. Here we can see that we do have that flat file content. So let's go ahead, let's run it through the XML flat file decoding action. And so here we can see that contents now be converted to XML. We'll then go ahead and parse it and convert it into JSON. So now we've got the JSON structure. You can see we've got this repeating records, essentially a record set. And so that allows us to then go ahead for each specific row, go ahead and upload it into Dataverse itself. Uh, previously, I talked a little bit about folders instead of code. Um, if you are going to be doing standard development, Logic App standard development in the portal, uh, this is where you would go ahead and add those schemas and maps if you have any of those maps. Now let's just go make sure our data landed correctly inside a Dataverse. So let's flip over there. So I'm in the Power Apps Maker Portal. Uh, I've gone ahead and selected the correct environment. I've then selected tables and then I've browsed for my custom table here. And then what I can do is click on the data tab and uh, change this filter to custom columns. Let's do that. And we can see those four records that we previously um, had processed inside of Logic Apps have now arrived into our custom table. So we know that everything worked as expected. Thanks for checking out this YouTube video. As always, likes, subscribes, comments are always welcome. And if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Happy to engage with you over there as well. Thanks again for checking out this video and we'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.